Hey guys, Professor Bill, Comic Book University, and Doom Patrol, Season 1, Episode 3, Puppet Patrol. This is badass, man. <laughs> Best show on TV. I'm sticking with that. All right. A couple things. First off, um, a lot of people ask me about Larry Trainer being gay. No. In the comic books, in the original comic books, he was not gay. I don't know if they retconned it later on like they did with Iceman at some point, um, and I don't have a problem with that, um, with either one, Iceman or Larry Trainer. Um, but no, DC Comics was like the most conservative comic book company I could imagine back in the day. Um, the only way that they would allow a gay character to come in or a black character to come in or, you know, whatever, was because uh, Marvel Comics was doing it. I mean, like, that's just real talk. Um, be upset by that if you want, by all means. I got the history to, to prove it. The history's there. You know what I'm saying? First black character, you know, uh, what do you call it? First black character to have his name uh, on the credits with another, you know, major character. Captain America and the Falcon. Luke Cage, the first uh, black character to have his own name on the titles and nobody else's. Luke Cage, Power Man. You know, like, Badass. And the first black character who actually stuck with the comic books to this day, Black Panther, you know, in the pages of Fantastic Four. Um, also, like, the richest nation there is. He's a ridiculously smart guy. Um, like, wow. There's a, and beating up on the Fantastic Four and the Avengers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That that stuff happens in the um, in the Marvel stuff. That innovative stuff happens there. First gay character, first gay character to actually get married. First openly gay character. You know, so all that stuff. Marvel. All that stuff is is pretty much always going to have been Marvel. Um, DC sees that this stuff works, sees that it sells. Then they say, hey, can we get some of this stuff over here? And they get somebody from Marvel to go and do it. That's just the way it is. Um, no, Larry Trainer. There was no way back in the '60s that they were going to make Larry Trainer gay. There was no way. Um, anyway, I do like that they're doing it here. Um, just to talk about that really quick. Uh, this um, and, and I don't want to answer those comments in typing because there's I don't like typing, uh, and it just it it takes forever and you can't enunciate emotion in this. So here, like this is me. This is my inflection. This is my tone. This is me. Um, you know, here's my face. I always say, um, what do you call it? Here's this character who has everything. Now again, I'm gonna sit here and talk about how yeah, back in the day, could you imagine being gay back then? Back then, in the, fifth, in the late 50s, early 60s, could you imagine being gay back then? Before the Vietnam War, after World War II, could you imagine being gay back then? Um, just because it was out of sight, out of mind for the rest of us, oh, it existed. There's always been gay people. It's written about in the Bible, for crying out loud. There have always been gay people. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And just, wow, finally, other human beings are getting rights instead of getting rights only because you're pretending to be something else. That sucks. And they're really showing that here. But at the same time, it's a very realistic, like this show isn't playing around. They're, it's a very realistic thing. The gay guy is the bad guy in this. <gasps> Imagine that. <laughs> um, he's a good guy. He's a hero. But here's this guy who had everything. Yeah, he's gay. That sucks. So is his lover. This lover who has to keep not just the idea that he's gay a secret, you know, like Larry Trainer, but he has to keep it secret from, every, like the only person who knows is Larry Trainer? He's got to keep everything else a secret. He can't, you know, like his wife doesn't even know. This guy, he gets to go home to his wife and his kids. You notice we never see his kids? We never see his kids because he never sees his kids. <laughs> and he barely sees his wife. Like, we get a perfect introspective into his life. Um, a lot of people are going to be coming down hard on his wife for leaving him at a time of need. She, she already left him. She already left him. This is just when she told him. Um, how bad it was to be a, you know, gay back in those days. I can only imagine, you know, but we talked about it a little bit. Um, imagine being a woman back in those days. Also, this guy controls the finances. She knew he was cheating on her. She knew he had a mistress. She thought it was a mistress. It turns out it was a mister. You know what I'm saying? But she, she knew he, she, that he had a side piece. You know what I'm saying? Like she knew it. She, she, she's not just wifey. She understands. She's just playing wifey. But he's in, in control of the finances. You know, it's a military, you know, barracks. He benefits from it. If he would have been more honest, I'm, t I'm speaking this as somebody, you know, who was in the military for a long time. He benefits by being married in the military. Um, you, um, you, you're stuck in a, if you're lucky, a two-room barracks if you're not married in the military. I don't care how old you are. You know what I'm saying? Unless you're an officer or you're a much higher rank, um, like an officer. You are, redu you are regulated to barracks. You're sharing a room with at least one other person, you know, um, unless you're married. 
then you're provided for. You're provided a house. You know what I'm saying? On, you know, military housing. Uh, it's a really great deal. So he wouldn't want to lose that. And she sure as hell doesn't want to lose that. So her leaving him, like he's in charge of the finances. What kind of job is she going to get? Secretary? Teacher? You know what I'm saying? Like what kind of job is she going to get? Back then, it's going to be a sucky job. Don't matter what she's qualified for. It's what she's going to be hired for. It's going to suck. She's probably got to move back in with uh, mom and dad. Dad, which is probably going to say, oh, you know, failed marriage, you're a loser. Like, that, there, there is no winning for her. There was no winning for her. That was her taking control of one part of her life at the expense of so many other parts of her life. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's just, there was no winning for her. That sucks. You want to see a real superhero in this episode? You saw her. You saw her. Um, what do you call it? Um, so yeah, she, even if he would have told her, you know, Hey, I'm actually, you know, I'm saying I'm, I'm actually gay and I'm seeing, you know, this other dude, she probably would have been okay with it. She probably would have, you know, probably, maybe she probably would have been a little bit okay with it. Like, okay, cool. So we understand. So you come by and see the kids once in a while. It's understood that we're not necessarily together again, but we'll stay married so that I can keep this house. You know what I'm saying? This military housing. And you get to still keep your your big secret with uh, your buds who already love you. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, bang. That probably would have worked. But no, he had to have everything. It was always about him. Everything was about him. He didn't want to hear about any other person's problems. It's funny. This guy's a bad guy. But we're still feeling bad for him. <laughs> Great writing. I actually thought that uh, his lover was the uh, spirit person inside of him. But, you know, because I thought maybe after he found him, you know, all messed up, maybe he wound up committing suicide and that's how he went inside of him, you know, like that. Um, nope, turns out it was uh, something else. Uh, I'm imagining it's his conscience at this point. Um, it's amazing. <laughs> like, I think it's his conscious, you know, uh, try, you know, this is your conscious speaking. Um, got that, uh, that Ant-Man, <laughs> that, that Ant-Man vs. Iron Man, uh, Captain America Civil War. Uh, uh, scene in my head now. This is your conscious speaking. <laughs> um, the rivalry between Cyborg and what's his face? Uh, um, Robot Man is perfect. I think the printer's in his butt and hiding the keys and all that stuff. That's just great. But here's another character, Cyborg, who, wow, <laughs> this guy, it sucks. It sucks having this guy um, be so mean to everybody. You know what I'm saying? Like, he's a jerk. I would hate to have this guy on my team. I would hate that. And I think we've all known somebody like that who's a team leader or manager or something like that. He's a jerk. Then you see the, the individual problems that he's got. His dad, you know? Uh, his, his dad has a superpower. I don't know if you guys noticed this or not. It's gaslighting. Worst freaking superpower in the world. Best superpower in the world. Most terrible superpower in the world if they use it. I'd rather have a freaking laser beam shot at me than freaking gaslighting shot at me. That's figurative, mind you. That's not literal. Um, wow, man. In the previous episode, if you do what I say, I will make you a god. If you do what I say, you'll make your mom proud post-mortem. This episode. If you don't do what I say, I'm cutting you off. From me and Star Labs. The end of this episode. Hey, man, I, you know I'm always there for you, right? This is like the worst father. <laughs> Holy crap. Like, Dad, could you just beat me instead of all this gaslighting, please? That has got to suck. Like, it has got to suck being Cyborg. And you know you had your memories manipulated. And he's doing everything within his limited resources to try and prove that. To try and see through the lies, man. God damn, this poor guy. That sucks. That sucks. Um... What else I got in here? Disseminated. Hmm. <laughs> Stapler face. I, I wrote that down as, as uh, one of my notes. Crazy Jane is freaking hysterical, man. Um, like when she put that staple in that dude's face, <laughs> like I, I'm thinking about Taser face from back in Guardians of the Galaxy 2, that movie. Taser face. Ah, everybody just laughing at him. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm seeing a recurring villain here. <laughs> even, if, even if it's just one time, whatever. Um, talk about a recurring vil villain. Uh, I had to actually look up, uh, I remembered his name partially and, and I, and I got, I, I thought it was like vegetable mineral man, whatever, but animal vegetable mineral man. That's actually his real name. I had to actually look up. I remember this guy. He was in the original run. He was in, uh, is, issue number 89 of the original 
Doom Patrol comic, when it went from, yeah, just volume one, whatever, when it went from My Greatest Adventure to the, uh, the ongoing title, uh, Doom Patrol, Animal Vegetable Mineral Man. Holy crap. I remembered him, and I knew he was on a comic book cover. I couldn't remember which one, so I actually had to start cycling through the original um, issues because I lost all my comic books. I can't say anything. It kills me. Everybody's got their own version of trauma. That's mine. That's mine, losing all my comic books because uh, I couldn't uh, figure out a payment method in time when I was in Saudi Arabia. That's messed up. So, um, yeah, man, Animal Vegetable Mineral Man. Once I saw that dude appear, oh, dude, I, like... I was done. I'm done. I'm like, you know what? I don't put anything past these guys at this point. I put nothing past these guys. Uh, I would I would love to be able to talk to the people in charge of the show. I would love that. Just to pick their freaking minds. Because, like, dude. <laughs> um, I know a lot of people talking about, oh, man, Grant Morrison's run. They should, ju they should just have somebody went and said, oh, they should have the balls to just do Grant Morrison's run. They've got the balls to do the original run. That's what, that's the thing that actually takes balls. Grant Morrison is an extremely popular char uh, extremely popular person. Yes, he is a character. Like, after after Neil Gaiman, who are we going to pick? Probably going to be freaking Grant Morrison, right? Alan Moore, maybe somewhere right in there, right? Grant Morrison's a little bit more um, approachable. But, like, nah, man. That's... <laughs> They're doing the original run also. They're doing a lot of different things, and it's insanity. I love what they're doing with this show. It's it's crazy. Um, speaking of meeting people like that, when that dude went up and met uh, Cyborg, <laughs> when he's like, hey, man, you're from uh, Justice League, right? Uh, yeah, he knew it was coming. Hey, what's Batman like? You know, when I met Mr. Jim Starlin... Uh, you can go back and check out that review on Comic Book University. Um, I tried really hard to not ask. I eventually did ask him about Stanley, only because it came up. Only because it came up. Um, but you know, like, like I don't have that problem. I know I'm just, you know, I'm I'm just a fan who's asking fans questions and things like that. You know what I'm saying? I'm talking to Donny Cates, talking to Jim Zub, I'm talking to Chips Zardowski, I'm talking to whoever I'm talking to. You know, saying, uh, freaking, what do you call Neil Adams? You know, saying I'm talking to whoever I'm talking to. I'm trying to ask you about you. I don't want to ask you about other people who I see as bigger than you. That's just not right. Like, how how insulting would that be? You know, I wouldn't mind when people come up to me, dude, what's what's Jim Starlin like? I'm happy to tell you because I know that, you know, fan or no fan of me, you want to know what's up with this guy. And I do, you know, fortunately, I do, I do have a, a face where at this point it's becoming more recognizable amongst the people who we're all huge fans of. You know what I'm saying? I Instead of, you know, like when I met Stan Lee, it's not just... Thanks for my childhood, Stan. You're the best. You know, saying, and, ah, you're welcome. You know, saying, and just, you know, and then being rushed out while you're getting a picture taken. Nah, at this point, some people actually recognize me. Oh, hey, uh, hey, what's going on, man? You know, like, that's great when somebody uh, actually recognizes my face who, like, you're one of my heroes. I look up to you and you recognize me? That is freaking awesome. So I do get that, that kind of access and I love that. So uh, I do try to stay conscious of things like that because... When, like, when you ask Cyborg what Batman's like, remember, nobody asks Batman what Cyborg's like. And Cyborg knows that. <laughs> so, yeah, that's, wow, that's just a messed up thing. <laughs> that's a messed up thing. So I, I felt his pain. He had every right to treat. In fact, if I were Cyborg, I would have totally made, I would have, I would have erased that dude's phone. Oh, there go all your phone numbers, bud. Hey, you know, back in the 80s, we used to have to actually remember people's phone numbers. How about that? <laughs> 90s, too. Um... Anyway, oh god, that animated map. If I don't get more of that animated map, that animated map was better than anything in Game of Thrones. You know, saying like their animated map, nah, way better than their opening. I love that freaking. I need to see recurring that animated map. Um, Animal Vegetable Mineral Man. At one point, when he was in Paraguay, there was a uh, Easter egg in there, talking about, oh, I want magnetic feet. You know, so I could walk up metal walls. And it was Robot Man he was talking to. Go check out Robot Man Explained in a minute. That was freaking funny. Excuse me. Oh, sadly, we no longer accept Groupon. I laughed my ass off at that. Listen, we don't get hallway scenes in this. Like, you know, whenever I talk about the Netflix TV series, the Netflix um, Marvel shows, we always have by episode three or so, we have a hallway scene, right? 
well, you know, by hallway scene, sometimes a staircase scene, like in season two of Daredevil, you know, you wind up getting that scene where it's like, okay, we'll try and have one camera facing, we'll, we'll pan it and we'll try and make it look like it's one uncut shot. No, this, the scenes are actually cut, um, but they, they blend it together. So it's perfect. And it looks like it's just one, you know, one take. It's not. Anyhow, um, um, they always have that, that hallway scene as I dub it. Um, yeah, back like that, whatever, uh, by episode three or so. So episode three here, I was kind of hoping, we didn't necessarily get it, but we did get an all-out action scene, uh, specifically with Crazy Jane and um, Robot Man. That was cool. It was good to see them actually unleash, seeing what they're actually able to do. Um, I loved and hated, but I especially loved the scene where he, he beats up on, where Robot Scene like beats up on all those guys, because... At first, I'm thinking these guys are just robots. They're just LMDs or something like that, right? No, turns out they were actually humans that were being mind controlled, utterly. Like they like prefrontal lobot lobotomy, and I'm now going to take over your mind. You're you're not an unwilling subject, so there's that. Um, wow, when he was like he was literally killing these people, I felt bad. Um. Again, I was in the military, so I know it's the internet, and people were like, well, you know, if, if, if you're going to get triggered by stuff like that, shut up, all right? Just shut up. Nobody's going to get triggered. Um, but if I do, it's my right to get triggered. Um, but yeah, I don't need to see torture scenes or, or, or gruesome scenes and things like that. I just don't need to see things like that. This wasn't anything like what we'd seen in any episode of The Titans, though. This was, yes, very violent, while at the same time, there was remorse shown. And that right there did it for me. I'm like, all right, thank you. He had blood all over me, realized what he did. At the same time, it was also a little bit funny. As much as, you know, you might hate seeing scenes where, like, there's just, you see human beings who it's not their fault, and they're just being murdered like this. Wow. Um, as much as, you know people with empathy, human beings, people with a with a soul, with a conscious, people who actually belong in societies, because if you don't have empathy, you don't belong in any community, um, because you're just as likely to hurt them as you are to help them. Yeah, you're a danger. Um, I thought that it was, it was cool how they also made it funny still. Like when he ripped off that dude's legs and started beating people with his ass, um, I don't know how you couldn't laugh at something like that. You know what I'm saying? It's like, so they, they regulated through the, the, the top emotions, you know, anger, sadness, um, joy, you know, all that stuff. They, they regulated that really well. Um, I don't think that was by coincidence. They did that really well. It wasn't like a Titan scene where it's just, you know, Miss McMahon duck. No, it was, this was, this was solid. I couldn't be upset at what I was watching. Um, Again, great TV show, man. Um, I know that the, the main dude died in this, but I'm hoping he's still going to wind up turning out to be General Immortus. Like, maybe at the end there'll be a meta-contextual meta scene where, you know, he just looks down, he's got the monocle. <laughs> like, that would just be so perfect to see that. But, yeah, man, I could just go on, literally, I can go on and talk about this this uh, this episode for an hour. I could talk about this 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 tv series for a week like this was well a day at least this is amazing i love this and uh yeah uh oh oh make sure you go and check out the uh post credit scene the, the not the post credit scene sorry there's not a post credit scene but you know the 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 um the trailer for next week basically uh always make sure you do that go online and check those out i love the show <laughs> i love the show wow <laughs> thank you for the show uh, that's going to be it for me, guys. Professor Bill Comic Book University. Class dismissed.